The year is 2000 and your parents are so goddamn tired of hearing you talk. They take you to the local rental store in order for you to pick out a movie to watch so you can shut your goddamn mouth. And one fateful day you stumble upon a movie named Chicken Run. A movie where you finally find the secret as to why the chicken crossed the road. Because there is a crazy lady with an axe on the other side. This movie was absolutely wonderful as a child covering things that children are quite fascinated by like capitalism, concentration camps, and the greed of humanity. And most importantly, this was my sexual awakening. I mean, god damn, they had no right making these chickens so thick. But anyway, 23 years have passed and we finally have received a sequel. So begs the question, 23 years, right? Was it worth the wait? Eh? I mean, kinda. Not, not really, uh, kinda? Maybe, I don't know. Let's talk about it. The movie was good decent if you will to me it definitely felt like a shell of its original form but obviously from reviews and even it breaking records on rotten tomatoes at least for the director itself for having one of the highest ratings of this director's movies but to me it just felt like they took the original movie and they said what if we took this and then just made it bigger well what exactly does bigger mean oh you know what i mean bigger oh oh you mean bigger no 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 bigger okay but seriously here they did just take the small town farm and just change that small farm into a big factory with more you know crazy security and, and made it more like a mission impossible uh breaking in instead of breaking out so before we get to the plot of the movie let's talk a little bit about the controversy because yeah they're, they're, i mean it's a movie Every movie has some sort of controversy here and there. But the main two characters, Rocky and Ginger, with all of their sexual tension that we had in the first movie, the voice actors were actually completely replaced with new actors. But Mel Gibson and Julia Sawala, they both were taken off the cast and they were replaced by younger actors. And the whole controversy here is a lot of people are saying this is ageist. And not only when it comes to the cast are people saying it's ageist, but even within the movie. But the character we all know and love, Fowler, the old rooster, kind of was pushed off to the side as a character like, hey, you're kind of just gonna get in the way because you're old and you can't do anything and stuff like that. So people were even upset about that. But the directors themselves actually came out and mentioned like, hey, you know, this wasn't a split second decision. This wasn't like, oh, we want to kick out the old. Is more of, they had an entire new crew, entire new movie. They just wanted to start fresh, with, you know, with new people, with new everything. But actually, Sawala herself came out and spoke about this. She said the reason the directors gave her is that her voice now sounds too old for the cast. However, this open letter has now been deleted. I mean, I understand her frustration. She was only 55 and her replacement was 51. So obviously it doesn't really make much sense that they would replace her for that reason. And if we want to be a little bit more honest with ourselves, I think the real reason has to do with Mel Gibson's past. You know, with the whole homophobia, anti-Semitism, bunch of DUIs, racism, and of course the cherry on top, domestic abuse. Public and it's a f embarrassment to me. You look like a f on heat. And if you get raped by a pack, it's really your fault. All right? Because you provoked it. You are provocatively dressed all the time with your fake boobs. You feel you have to show off in tight outfits and tight pants and stuff. You see your f from behind. And that green thing today was enough. That's provocative. Okay? Hitting a woman when she's holding a child in her hand, breaking her teeth twice in the face. What kind of man is that? Mm, oh, you're all angry now. You're gonna get you know to, what? you know what? Sir. You're gonna answer one. So personally, I think the real reason they didn't put Mel Gibson in this movie has to do with this controversy. And they probably replaced both actors so it wasn't so obvious. But you know, they're not actually gonna say that. And honestly, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't even notice until I finished the movie that the voice actors were different. I don't know if that's a bad thing or not, but I, I couldn't tell. Now, a lot of you might be wondering why I've been standing throughout this video. Well, that is all thanks to FlexiSpot. They actually sent me a freaking desk, a standing desk to be more specific, and I freaking love it. Now, I've personally been looking for a standing desk for a while. I had one before, but it was kind of flimsy. It shook a little bit and 
the electronics kind of pooped out on me. The amount of quality that comes with FlexiSpot is so nice. Now, the reason I love standing desk is I have a fair share of back problems. You know, I'm a YouTuber. I sit at my desk the majority of my life. Benefits aren't just that. Standing up in general, for some reason, helps me work. It keeps me focused. I feel more like energetic like i'm sure there's some science behind it but i'm just saying that personally i enjoy standing when i work now and these desks have a memory system of standing sitting and two other settings that you could set for maybe someone else maybe your wife or a friend that uses the desk as well and another nice feature i like about this is the child lock you know since i'm a dad that definitely is something nice because he just comes in and starts pressing buttons and also the fact that they have a fail safe system if you're ever scared of your desk coming up and maybe a cable's attached that you weren't aware of if it feels any pressure or any tug at all it'll just stop go down a little bit and then you can figure out what's going on and you might be wondering about the weight limit. Well, if you see my desk, I got three monitors, a camera mount, a light, a, a bunch of crap on my desk, and it's completely fine. The weight limit is actually 440 pounds, so I could literally sit on this desk with everything else and it wouldn't budge. So fear not when you want to place your six gamer monitors on your on your desk. So do yourself a favor, get yourself a standing desk today. If you want a standing desk with a T-frame, you could check out their E7 basic model. Or if you're in a limited budget, they have a desk that is only $150, their E2 model. And you get all the basic standing functions that you need. So make 2024 your year. It's time to unlock the best workspace you can have with FlexiSpot's New Year's sale. Use my exclusive code right here for an extra $30 off for an E7 and E7 Pro, or you can use this code for an extra $50 off of the E7 Plus. Trust me, it's a rare treat. Don't miss out on designing your dream setup with FlexiSpot. The basic plot of the movie is Ginger and Rocky have moved all of the chickens to a secluded area in order to stay safe. <clears throat> they end up having a wee little baby. She grows up to be a rebellious teenager. And this rebellious teenager, you know, like the classic cliche, they're like, oh, I want to see the world. I want to go out and... I, I, you're holding me down, Bob. I would have, I would have be my old girl. She ends up going out off the island in order to find this truck with a bucket with a chicken in it. And I do find that part quite funny. Is the reason she's attracted to this uh, area that they're going to is just because they see a happy chicken in a bucket with two thumbs up. She even says the line of like, "What chicken doesn't want a bucket?" You get to sit in a bucket. What chicken doesn't want to have their own bucket? I want a bucket. But on her way, Molly meets another chicken around her age named Frizzle, and, and they both start looking to find this truck. So they end up finding their way to this chicken truck, and they head to the factory, and it happens to be a nugget factory, hence the name of the movie, Dawn of the Nugget. And in this factory, they're trying to figure out the recipe for the perfect nugget in order to mass produce it into fast food and all those different things. So obviously Ginger Rocky and the whole gang, they go on a big mission impossible situation to break into this high security area and break out their daughter. And that's pretty much the entire movie. I mean, there isn't really much plot, which is another reason why this movie doesn't hit as hard as the first one. There's not much like, character development it's not really focused on the characters necessarily the majority of the movie is the mission impossible stuff is the spy stuff is the breaking in which is fun not saying it's not fun i'm just saying i like the original movie better there's nothing wrong with that it's just very cut and dry i guess you could say so i'm gonna get all the things i didn't like out of the way and then we'll talk about the good things like i just said i don't really think the writers realize why everyone liked the first movie yeah sure the whole planning and setting all this escape prison break uh the great escape parody type stuff that's all fun and good but the reason we really liked it was because of the characters was because of Rocky being a complete outsider coming in and you know having a character arc, character change, Ginger being super hard-headed and then they both kind of gradually meet in the middle and their characters grow and it's fun to watch that stuff. The writing was very good and the writing isn't terrible in this movie, it's just not as good. Because in this movie, like I said, it's just all about the spy stuff, all about the breaking in, all about getting her out, all about you know the action, the danger, and honestly, I just didn't really care for the daughter, Molly, that much. I don't know if it's just me. I just, I don't know. Maybe they didn't give her enough time to build her character, but it just felt like the cliche, oh, I'm a teenager. 
I'm going to be rebellious. I'm going to go off and discover the world because my parents are are restricting me and holding me down and not telling me the truth about stuff. It, you know, we've seen it a billion times. Towards the end of the movie, she did redeem herself. I just feel like if she got a little bit more focus on her as a person, it would help me feel the character change. And there's one very specific part of the movie that I just want to mention because I honestly rolled my eyes and even laughed at this part. So in the beginning of the movie, Rocky shows Molly how to make popcorn. Then we get this moment, this do or die situation way later in the movie where all of them are caught in a corn silo. And the moment they got in the corn silo, you know, instantly my mind's like, oh, popcorn. You know, they're gonna do the popcorn thing, pop themselves out, you know, that's it. But they were stuck in that corn silo for so goddamn long. Like the whole time I was watching it, I was like, just do it. Like, just make it into popcorn. We all know that's what you're gonna do. Just do it already. But what made this scene worse and what made me roll my eyes was when Rocky and Ginger were both like, ah, man, I ran out of ideas. I got nothing. If only there was some way we could get out of here with all of this corn. I guess we're screwed. Ginger, you always have a plan for everything. Sorry, Rocky. Looks like I don't got a plan for this one. The camera slowly pans to Molly as she picks up a pair of glasses to, you know, to do the, the sunlight and beam thing. And she goes, guys, I got this. Best. And she always has a plan. Not this time. Last one. Oh, no. I know what they were doing at this part of the movie, but it was just so obvious that I couldn't help but just, you know, laugh to myself. That's the only specific part of the movie that I really was like, Ugh. But let's talk about the good stuff, shall we? The animation. I mean, like, what can you say? It's the exact same as the original movie. I love it. I love the classic claymation style. I just, it's great. It's perfect. I love the animation. I do like the design of the Nugget Factory and how absolutely ridiculous it is. They were definitely self-aware with what they were doing with a lot of this, with like all the security guards, all these like little security robots with lasers. They were really going full force into the whole Mission Impossible stuff. And one thing above all that I loved about this movie is the horror elements. I know that sounds weird saying that Chicken Run the sequel has horror elements, but it does. There are times in this movie, it does get extremely unsettling. And in those moments, I was like in it. I was invested, you know? For example, the scene when they're in the happy area of the factory. First of all, it feels like a liminal space. It's so bright and vibrant. Like obviously the moment you're there, you can just feel that something's off. Frizzle and Molly both start to realize that every chicken there is completely brainless and they don't even know where they are. And it gets even scarier when Frizzle comes back and she's brainless as well. And not to mention the goddamn guy in the chicken suit. That shit was creepy. And the reason I love this so much is this is based off of like real life shit because they even explain it in the movie that whenever chickens die, you know, their muscles tense up. And when their muscles tense up, then, you know, it makes tough meat. So they do this thing where they give him drugs and make him super happy. And in this instance, they just give him like a collar and it like brains, brainwashes him or something. They basically make it to where they're so mindless that whenever they die, they don't tense up. So the meat is more tender. And whenever we get the scene of Molly being under the table next to these three humans witnessing on a, a big monitor, the fact that all of this facility is based in killing and eating chicken. And since this was Molly's like first time at realizing this, it was extremely shocking for her. Also the way that they killed the chickens was terrifying as well because they had this like little chicken escalator up to a big sun. They end up calling out a number and that chicken gets all happy because they're the chosen one. They go up into the sun and then they turn into a bucket of nuggets. They did a really good job when it comes to that element of the movie, I will admit. Also, want to clarify this, spoiler alert, this is kind of like a big spoiler, but kind of expected at the same time. Mrs. Tweedy comes back in the picture and I loved it. Mrs. Tweedy is obviously doing the same shit she's always done. She's insanely greedy. She just marries a dude for his money or his potential for money. Like in this movie, she married the scientist and the reason she married the scientist is so he can help her discover the secret to nuggets so she can make 
billions of dollars. And it's funny because even when this big businessman comes into play, who's the one that they're pitching the business idea to, she starts hitting on him instead in front of her husband. Mrs. Tweedy is a goddamn terrible person and I love it. Nonchalantly showing corporate greed and how capitalism is just, you know, breeds this type of shit. But the end of the movie is pretty predictable. They end up saving Molly. Molly ends up being like the one to save the day because it's like, oh, look, look at me. I'm my own person now. They even end up going back to save her friend Frizzle and all of the other chickens as well. And then all of those chickens end up moving back to that island living happily ever after. But a twist at the end of the movie, it shows that they're gonna start going on more and more missions in order to save even more and more chickens. But at the end of the day, there's not much to this movie. It's pretty cut and dry, uh, but it's fun. It's a fun movie. I enjoyed watching it. I did kind of like get bored at moments. We obviously could say there's an underlying messages about capitalism, etc. but it doesn't have those strong messages as the original movie, or it doesn't have like, the good character writing is the original. However, it's a great fun sequel. Not really bad, but not really great. And if you guys want your nuggies tugged, and if you want to get sat on by that thick chicken, make sure to subscribe. Because I'm always tugging. I always be tugging. Bye.